Trends, looking at the pace and direction of life in Taiwan. Hello and welcome to Trends. I'm Gino Wang. In a publication on funeral etiquette that's due to be released in June, the Interior Ministry's Department of Civil Affairs suggested that in cases where one partner in a same-sex relationship dies in the obituary, the survivor should be referred to as the partner of the deceased instead of a euphemism. In today's program, I speak with Josephine Ho, founder. Of the Center for the Study of Sexualities at Taiwan's National Central University, she is also one of the best-known feminist scholars in Taiwan, and is dubbed the Godmother of the Taiwanese Queer Movement. I asked her what her thoughts are on the new funeral etiquette. As we all know, within the Chinese culture, the structure of family actually frames how we view interpersonal relationships, and in this way. In the funeral practices, your gender position, your position within the family, dictates how you're going to be situated. And if you do not fit into the normal family structure, usually you're not included in the list of names. And this time, the suggested guideline put uh, gay relationships uh, into the structure by showing that you're partners. I think this is a very interesting move because. Reforming social practices through these daily ceremonies or、uh, names and、social、concepts. Social practices.、Mm-hmm. This will be very interesting in combating the habitual prejudices that we hold by excluding people from these very important familial、uh, ceremonies. You said that who you are in a, in the Chinese society of Taiwan is largely dictated by where you position in the family. Could you elaborate、yes. on that, please? Western society has gone through centuries of capitalistic individualization process. So, a, an individual's position is decided by how the person situates himself in relation to the market, in relation to jobs, and and、uh, other relationships. But in the, within Chinese society, who you are, even in the family registry, is still dictated. By how you situate yourself within the structure of family in relation to who your parents are or who your siblings are, and in what kind of a generation position you situated. So within the obituary or the funeral announcement, your name will be put in the exact same position in relation to this family structure. And if your name does not appear, that means you don't belong to the family. There's no relationship. By acknowledging the gay relationship within the obituary practice in the Chinese society, you're practically announcing that the family structure can now have some kind of leeway, allowing non-normative relationships to be recognized. Do you consider it a, a step forward or、uh, backward as far as human rights are concerned? Oh, I think this is a very ingenious step because.、Uh, Previously, women's groups have tried to outlaw prejudiced language, discriminatory terms from the campus by using laws and legal codes. But I think it's far more、uh, effective to use these guidelines and suggestions and creative terms to replace old prejudiced terms. And by reforming the funeral practices, you're actually changing the fabric of daily life. And the new practices, the new terms, will gradually replace old prejudice terms. And this is the way to change the world and change how people feel toward non-normative sexualities. What do you think this means then for the uh, hardline uh, conservatives who consider same-sex romantic relationships morally wrong? Whether the conservatives are against it or not, social practices are there for people to choose from, and I think making it available is helping people to make a decision about how they want to present their relationships. Do you think the、uh, conservative groups are ever going to be protesting this publication, telling the government to retract its words? If it's a legal.
legally binding document, I think they have a ground to do that. But the government is merely making the suggestion. It's not mandatory. Nobody's required to use it. It will add and increase people's power to resist conservative uh, uh, attack on gay relationships. And, and the government's stand on this issue will add to legitimacy of acknowledging gay relationships. How do you think the general public will receive this? Well, since it's a suggested term and it's not mandatory, I think the public will receive it nicely and say, oh, okay, uh, those who want to acknowledge that may use it, and if I don't want to acknowledge, I won't use it. So I think there shouldn't be too strong a reaction to it. It only offers the opportunity for people to choose a different way of acknowledging. Have you ever attended a, a funeral of a person who was in a same-sex relationship when he or she passed away? No, I myself have not, but I've heard the friends who have attended ceremonies, and the whole ceremony was hosted by the partner, the surviving partner. So I think it's, it's uh, the government's announcement of suggested guidelines will really uh, help gay relationships to surface and to assert the existence of such relationships. I heard from my friend who attended the ceremony that usually funerals are places where the Chinese demonstrate a hierarchical relationship within the family, exactly. the structure of the family. But this time, the older generation of the family members only sat uh, in the back while the surviving partner of the deceased hosted the whole ceremony, gave a recount of the deceased's life, and uh, uh, orchestrated the whole uh, memorial service, which I think is an outstanding uh, performance because the real significance of the relationship was, was featured. Because, you know, usually people don't always keep up with family relationships, especially when you become adults, that certain relationships with your parents or your siblings are much lighter than your real relationship with your co-workers, your friends, uh, and your lovers. So uh, to be recognized as someone who had a gay relationship, the real relationship in your life, at your own funeral, I think is much more important than recognizing that you had a parent, that you had siblings, the very a large, distantly related family structure. The reality of life is a lot of people live within their gay relationships much more than living with their parents or their siblings. That is not only true with uh, gay people. It's true for everybody mm. these days that you, don't, you no longer maintain a very, very close relationship with your parents, that your parent dominates your life. You're usually on your own. I think in the, the funeral a person's life is to be recognized as it is, not as it should be. It's almost like in, at weddings in these days, in the Chinese weddings, it's almost like it's two families getting married and the parents invite their friends and your own friends only constitute a very small part of it. But that's also changing. A lot of the new weddings are the couple-oriented wedding rather than parents-oriented wedding. I think in this funeral structure it's the same way. It used to be the family structure is featured, and your minor position, uh, the vi minor position of your partner, is probably deleted from the scene, or only euphemistically presented. But at at this recent gay funeral, the partnership, the real relationship, the real significant part of your life is featured at your own funeral. Wouldn't you think that makes better sense? That this is the meaning of my life. These familial occasions, weddings and funerals, serve to affirm family structures and your position within it rather than acknowledging your life and your relationships and how you see yourself. But that's not changing. And now it's changing. At least we hope. Once again, that's Josephine Ho, founder of the Sexuality Study Center at the National Central University. Thank you for joining us. For Trends, I'm Gino Wong.